From UFOs to psychic powers and government conspiracies, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Here are the facts. Advertisers, propagandists, and business interests are well aware of the ways in which an individual may be swayed toward a desired conclusion. Increasingly, researchers are learning how to enhance mental performance through technology and nootropics, or smart drugs. But this isn't the whole story. In fact, your brain has been skewing your perception as surely as a propaganda film, a drug-fueled interrogation, or joining a cult would. It's done this on its own, often without your knowledge. It manufactures its own drugs, it increases activity in some parts of your brain while lowering activity in others, and it does this every time you fall in love. Here's where it gets crazy. From a biological perspective, your brain's primary task is to ensure your survival and allow you to reproduce, passing your genes on to the next generation. While scientists have yet to completely crack the code behind love, research has found that it is a chemical state, often divided into three types or stages, lust, attraction, and attachment. Each of these stages evolved to serve a biological purpose. Lust, for example, exists to spur sexual mating, while other stages ensure the potential of parent-child bonding. The human brain makes the human body more likely to enter these states through chemicals, such as the hormones estrogen and testosterone. These aren't the only chemicals involved. Remember that rush of your first crush when you break into the sweats and feel your heart pound every time this person entered a room? These feelings can be traced back to your brain's release of dopamine, norepinephrine, and phenylethylamine. Norepinephrine and dopamine in particular combine to produce that unmistakable elation, craving, and focus on one person because norepinephrine has similarities to adrenaline, that's the increased heart rate and excitement, while dopamine is commonly known as the pleasure chemical and linked to both euphoria and addiction. At Rutgers University, Dr. Helen Fisher found that MRI scans of people in the attraction stage exhibited increased blood flow in areas of the brain with concentration of dopamine receptors. This leads to increased sleeplessness, increased attention, and increased short-term memory. Sure, it sounds a bit like legal speed, but that's still not the whole story. Researchers at the University College London found that people in love have lower levels of serotonin, and neural circuits that help us assess others are also suppressed. This leaves us with a troubling implication, because the lower serotonin levels are similar to those found in people with obsessive-compulsive disorder. This means that when in love, we may be both more likely to obsess over a partner and less able to regard her or him objectively. That old saying about blind love holds true, at least in that particular type or stage of affection. It's tempting to look for a simplified answer to explain how our brains skew perception in favor of a potential partner, but even the most promising chemicals have a dark side. Take oxytocin. Like dopamine, the hormone oxytocin has been associated with both pleasure and love. For a time, oxytocin was touted as a moral molecule because studies showed that it could increase some beneficial interpersonal behaviors. Though oxytocin was soon called everything from the cuddle chemical to the hug hormone, the simplified hype painting this as a warm and fuzzy chemical just isn't true. In addition to its potential for heightening feelings of trust, oxytocin can also heighten suspicion, ethnocentrism, envy, and other less feel-good traits. As Ed Yong points out, oxytocin's double-edged effects may be some sort of motivator that drives us to seek out social interactions, meaning that it can sway individuals in different ways. But there's one thing we do know for sure about oxytocin. It plays a vital role in bonding relationships. It's associated with sex, mother-infant bonding, birth, and more. Vasopressin has also been associated with long-term bonding. And oddly enough, oxytocin and vasopressin can also interfere with dopamine and norepinephrine pathways, perhaps explaining how our brain nudges passionate love to dwindle as attachment grows. And while our brains are more likely to deceive us, they have evolved to do so, and the survival of our species depends on this chemical deception. 
This barely scratches the surface of how your brain deceives you about your mates. This also means that when you are in these chemical states, it becomes difficult to separate your objective observations from the bonding tendencies your brain is attempting to generate. Is the love of your life really the perfect person for you? Or is there something your brain doesn't want you to know? picture this bride and groom make. They might have found each other, but instead they have remained strangers. Each is a dream in the other's mind. They don't want to accept each other as they really are. They would rather change each other to satisfy their own ambitions. That's why they are doomed to fail.